Ask any Texas kayaking what he fears the most in winter. Don't be surprised if he says, getting shot at. It's always a strange time of year where kayak anglers and waterfowl hunters somehow got to find a way to coexist, especially when peak duck season and trout season sort of smash together, creating fantastic environments for both parties. And that's where we're at. We're heading in and we've got an opportunity at some amazing trout. I think tomorrow's gonna be one of those days where it, it's gonna be good. Like, it's gonna be real good. The other day was just crazy in regards to the quality. Uh, best four going about 17 pounds. Thinking I can easily break 22, 23. Um, you know, I mean, it's just that good right now. So we're going to get loaded up. I've got a bunch of stuff here that I need to consider. I think we're going to go with corgis. Um, it's going to be foggy. It's going to be everything. We're going to be hiding. It's going to be wow. When I'm hunting trophy trout, there's two levels of tuning that I'm looking to do. The first step is to tune in the fish, figuring out where they're at, their patterns. But the second step is to tune in yourself. It can be mental. You will lose big fish. You will come up empty handed. But I can assure you that if you stay patient and press forward, good days are coming. Can't even lift it up. Jesus. We got ourselves a stud finally on day two. I'm excited to show you guys this one. fat, <sighs> kind of tough to handle, and a lot of attitude, man. These are special, special trout right here, man. I mean, look at that. That's just, God, that's a stud. I love it, man. I love every bit of this. These things fight hard. You sort of saw how um, 
you know, how long it took. And um, the water's still pretty cool, so they're a little bit more resilient right now. Plenty of belly support. I'm not going to talk too long about it, but um, this is special right here. Something you don't see all the time. And we're hitting just stud after stud today. So, let's see here. God, look at that. What do you guys think? Let's see here. I'm going to say 26. You know, not, not a trophy, but... Woo! Right on the dot of 26. Man. Right on 26. That's beautiful, man. Beautiful. Big speckled trout in the winter seem to be a little bit more resilient in regards to handling them after you catch them. We're gonna let this one go. In the summer, however, they do tend to exhaust more, fight a little harder, and are just one of those ambush species that will absolutely fight to the death. That being said, if you're consistently on big trout, always practice conservation. If you know an old salt that's been around in peak years between the 70s and 80s, I'm sure they'll tell you about it. I've put enough pressure on this spot, so we're gonna take a little cruise up a little west and see what's lurking in and around those areas. Now, one thing I'll show you guys is, uh, <clears throat> you know, when it comes down to trout fishing, some of the patterns that are, I would say, are wise to detect um, is always sort of look at the, the bellies of these fish. Um, trout eventually will sort of stop moving and stay stuck to the ground, especially during, uh, you know, these, these cold punches that we get. So an easy indication of that is, of course, what many call rashing, but not even so much that. So earlier, earlier, rashing starts, which is barely starting to show signs right here, is actually mites. Um, you see like that sea lice stuff, they move, like if you touch them, they'll, they'll move around, see like that one's moving. And uh, that's a clear indication that they're already starting to kind of stay put <clears throat> and sort of find their, their winter homes. So uh, just a little trout tip for you. Uh, things to look at, you know, not just going after these trout and catching and releasing, but you know, look at them, sort of study them. And um, if you take notice of little details like that, it'll sort of help you figure out what these trout are actually doing. Like a scene out of a scary movie, my hands are getting a little clammy, I'm feeling a little Paranoid, well maybe not paranoid, but maybe more annoyed. I'm waiting for this big bite to happen. And then all of a sudden... Booyah. Another beautiful trout here. This one is sandwiched. <clears throat> Here. Need to keep this one kind of low though, we've got some company. Hey guys, I'm Chris Castro with Old Town Canoe and Kayak, and I'm going to talk to you guys a little bit about the autopilot and what I like about stocking 
trophy speckled trout and how I've been able to fish intelligently with it. The autopilot distinguishes itself a little bit far beyond than just a motorized kayak. Now where I love the autopilot and, and where I've been able to succeed quite a bit is using this platform to creep, to slowly engage, to be super quiet and to cast into these trout, not at them, but actually into them, for those of y'all who know what I'm talking about. The autopilot has really put me in that position to be stealthy and to fish intelligently with not just the head unit, but I have a hummingbird fish finder for all the side scan and, and, and what have you. That's painting a, a picture for me that I, I refer to as digital side casting. So today we're gonna do something a little different. We're still going after trout. 53.5 degree temps. Who knows, man, maybe we'll luck out and grab a, a stud right here. You know, I'm trying to pick apart these trout in areas that just look like a good ambush point. You know, much like a cheetah, just sitting there low in the grass and waiting for that opportunity. And that's what I envision. And when I see these points with side scan, uh, you know, I'm able to sort of dissect structure. It's not so much pinpointing the fish. Yeah. This is more than just a point A to point B kayak. Most importantly, its versatility will shine, especially when it's a matter of inches. mouth look at the head when you look at a trout this size um, you know you really do get a, an appreciation you, you got to break them down you know look at their their jaw look at their eyes they sort of have those pointed up looking eyes on that upper quadrant and uh, that that mouth is just it, it just spells ambush <laughs> 